One of many soft skills I wish designers became more familiar with is how to read a room. It's not a skill taught in school and it becomes painfully obvious when it's not common sense to someone. Even if you feel like you're a natural at reading the room, I've got a couple tricks and tips to help you with your next presentation. I've talked in past podcasts about how I stage my in-person interviews. Whether the candidate brings in a design challenge or work of their own, I don't really care. What I do care about is how well they present their ideas. There are a few skills that come into play here. Being able to articulate your thoughts is huge. Being able to receive feedback and critique is huge. I'm going to cover those in future rants. Today, however, I'm talking about reading a room. There are certain visual clues people give in both body language and demeanor that I want to help you pick up on so that you can better address them and know what to do next. These insights come from painful experiences both personally and with team members. If you've got other ways to solve these presentation pain points, let me know. But let's start here. One of the more common situations I see for designers is walking into a feature's first mock review. In this meeting, let's say there's product managers, developers, Q&A, and while all seems calm during the introduction, as soon as the visualizations hit the screen, people start chiming in with all sorts of feedback. The clues are in what they say and the tone at which they say them at. They'll say things almost passive aggressive, things like, how does this work? Or this isn't represented in the mocks. Or why would we do this when we've got something else that does something very similar? The tone is very matter of fact. Sometimes they might not say a word, and they're sitting there with their arms crossed and their furrowed brows. The read here is this. They weren't brought in early enough. They weren't involved earlier in the process. And right now, they're feeling ignored and undervalued. They're feeling like they're being treated as second class on the product team. What you can do next is spend time listening. Seek to understand their feedback around the mocks. Note that the feedback, while valid, is also rooted in angst with the process. The real fix here is to get those speaking up involved earlier in the process. Now what about the opposite situation? Let's say you're in a presentation and you're met with silence. Here's the clues. People are avoiding eye contact, maybe even looking at the floor, maybe pulling out their phone to escape the situation. The read here is this. There's a bit of awkwardness on the topic being discussed. People are feeling tense and want to mentally escape. Many things could attribute to this mood. It could be that there's some history on the work that you're showing and people aren't eager to be re-engaged. Maybe they were bulldozed last time. Or maybe they felt belittled in the last conversation. What you can do next is if everyone's feeling the same thing, it would be very appropriate to just acknowledge the situation. You could say something like, it seems like everyone got a little quiet here. What are your thoughts? Try asking a few people specifically for their comments. Um, see what you can do to draw out the conversation and keep the conversation going. Of course, this approach may require more of a solid relationship established prior to the meeting. Now, one last situation, and this one may be the unicorn of meeting responses, but let's say your presentation is being met with smiles and upbeat vibes and maybe even humor. The read here, people are on board and engaged with the direction things are heading. They're excited about this feature as it may be of interest to them personally or something they would have liked to see happen a while ago. Sometimes the good mood may be a result of something that happened earlier in the day and had nothing to do with the current situation. What to do next? Ride this one out as long as you can. This feeling may not exist the next time around. The good moment may even be worth sneaking in a few more if wishes were fishes, noting it's in these settings getting approval is easier than in the previous two scenarios. The short of these three scenarios and many other scenarios is this. Humans are emotional beings. There is a slew of emotions not covered here that you'll experience in the workplace. With each of them, take time to understand them. Step back and recognize where they're coming from. And then with humility and earnest intent, look for a path to move forward, validating those feelings in the room. When you do these things, I've seen designers' careers really explode in their career paths. Here's another pro tip. When people are expressing their thoughts and emotions, physically take notes. Everyone loves to see that their feelings and their wishes are being seriously considered. Taking a physical note will help them feel validated. 
They're more likely to speak up since you've given them the confidence and they're more likely to have your back the next time around. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Design Today. I hope everyone has a great week. That's it.